nothing quite like a night of cooking bricks. Good thing we have our old friend Pete to help us do it. All right, we have a three by three by three. That's nine blocks. There's 27 blocks of charcoal. That should be a plenty, a plenty. Mwahaha. So on today's great adventure, we will be hunting more wolves for more pelts and we'll be getting all of our wood because we used all of it. We used all of our wood already to make that charcoal. Oh no, I think I found a bear. I found something nasty. It growled at me. Peekaboo! This is one of the reasons why I need to deforest the area. These trees they have too much cover that you can't see what's going on. Now bears, unlike wolves, will chase you and they will keep up with you. So this large brown bear will chase us indefinitely. But he is too fat to get out of that crack. So we will shoot him and take advantage of the situation. Until he escapes. And the bear is dead. It only took a battalion of arrows to take him out. What a hefty guy. We have another eight. Medium scrapped. Oh, what is it called? Medium scrap tied. Once uh, these finish, I'll move them over to the strong tannin and I'll put those in here. And then that should be finished as well, which means we can move all of this lime water into that barrel and make a new barrel of lime water. This is lumber load number two. We are filling our supplies again. Let's do a few more runs before we get too tired. We still have bush meat to spare. And would you look at that? Some of our turnips are ripened and ready for harvest. Let us collect. All right, all right. Turnips. I think the rest are still, still in bloom. Our flax has a long way to go yet. And we have our first haul of fire bricks. This is great. We will take all of them and start the next batch right away. All right, so we have a full line of pine logs and almost a full line of birch. So I'll go get a little bit more birch and plant these turnips again because they'll last up until, excuse me, through the winter. And then we'll cut the rest of this up for firewood. So we start uh, having a supply of, of wood. Next, we will take these fire bricks and make a whole bunch of bloomeries. I want to make a bunch of glass right away. And we'll take the rest of our bricks and make the tops for them. There we go. Uh, yeah, let's just make four for now. We don't need too many. But then these extra bricks we will use later. So just in time, everything's finishing up. I uh, spent some some of the night carving out a little uh, root cellar. So we're going to go down two blocks, platform, down two blocks, platform, down two blocks. And then once I have another hammer, because mine broke a while ago, I will chisel out a bunch of or quarry out a bunch of this downstairs area and make two large cellars. I'd want one for uh, pies, a pie cellar, and I want one for juice and crocs. So uh, they will both take up a lot of space, so we're going to have to work on this slowly. We'll need a lot more chert cobblestone to kind of line this wall going down. Uh, but in the meantime, we uh, this should be finished. I don't see any more smoke coming out. And we desperately need this charcoal in order to make some more um, of our copper tools and glass. So I am going to get working on that here in a second. I'm going to do a couple bits of glass here. Let's see, make sure I have enough. Yeah, we'll do three, three things of glass. And then we will do 
a large bit of copper. This will give us six ingots, and it'll save me a lot of time of having to pour it. So the ingots we can use for more plates and whatnot. And then we put all this charcoal in here. Perfect. Okay, so I just did the math here to get uh, one ingot of bronze, tin bronze, we need to spend 44 copper. Actually, I think this might be two. Let's test here. If we put 44 and six in, we'll get two and, okay, two and a half. So I split it up accordingly. So every four of these will be five ingots of bronze. So one or five, 10, 15. So that'll be one anvil and six tools and i have exactly six here so that is perfect actually <laughs> we could not have made that any better uh, that is i mean i think we had one extra yeah one extra tin we used a lot of that uh, or we will use a lot of that copper doing this but that is a perfect amount nine here and six here is exactly what we have now my question is will it all fit it will it will all fit in here awesome so i'm gonna i'm gonna go into part of the day here and cook all this uh, and give up give up my light just to get this bronze going because we already we already have it ready all right time for the big pour oh yep yeah, okay i get it all right, let's make sure this is tin bronze. Yes, this is tin bronze. All right, pour. 1,500 units to pour. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Last time we were pouring, we were in a dirt hole. Now look at us. Ta-da! We're in the Bronze Age. Now I'll still be using copper pickaxes until I... Um, can get a better supply of bronze because I don't really want to use it all up. But that is it. That is our first pour. Get rid of this. While we're waiting for all that to cool and, and finish up in the bloomery, I thought we'd let's go look around for some ores again. We did a little bit over here. Found very poor of pretty much everything. And then we went up north and found all of that nickel. So I want to go south a little bit and see what's nearby. Okay, so there's a lot of copper here. We can find this fairly easily. Get rid of our dot. High native copper. So all we'll have to do is go um, node search. We'll just dig straight down and then start looking for it um, in this northern square here let's go a little bit further looks like we got a deer oh he's coming right in our face what a tricky oh it just happened i did not expect that oh he fell asleep he's bleeding out what a wild animal it's actually a day later and me recording um and we have our ingots done our anvil is here I made a few more pies overnight, and I'd like to really start getting to work on the cellar down there. But first, I want to make the juice press, because we did another harvest, of, and we have too many berries. They're all going to go bad, so we need to get this juice press done. We need to make a bucket, and we need to make a ton of bottles so we can start storing away this juice for the winter. While we're waiting for this stuff to cook up, we can make our new hammer and pickaxe. And I've got a couple bottles going. We're warming up these ingots here. Uh, while I was out, I did a bunch of prospecting. I did a row. I did a row here and kind of a snake along the mountain here. Um, there's a lot of bismuth, which is good for bronze. Um, I think, yeah, they're right there. There's some hematite here very poor so we're gonna have to search this area a lot more and see if we can't find some iron around here poor bismuth and then over here i think there is quite a bit of 
that's titanium. Limonite is titanium, I think. There's some cassiterite. I think there was a very, yeah, very high copper node right here. Ultra high copper node here. So I think this is where we're going to have to go get some copper. So we got three bronze pickaxes. That'll help us when we start doing some serious mining. Also have an extra, a couple extra copper pickaxes. So we can use those in the meantime. And then this chisel will be specifically for making, um, we're gonna need it for making the fruit press. So we're gonna have to get, we're gonna have to start working on getting more resin too. There we go. We have our fruit press. We will need to start doing this. I just opened this uh, vessel under here and realized we have another couple hundred berries that we need to work on. So, yes, this needs to be done. This needs to be done. So we're going to spend most of the day clearing out a room for a cellar and a juice press room. We have to get this stuff going pronto. We finished our cellar. We've uh, it's not quite uh, eight by eight. I don't think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a seven. Oh, I, I think that is max. Yeah, seven by seven is the max. So we could make it taller. I don't necessarily need to right now. I might make it four tall, but I still have to fill in where this dirt is just to make it look nicer. But yes, we have. All of our grain and we can actually see what it how long it lasts now that it's in a cellar and we can actually open this um, so these will last for another week we can eat those relatively soon these are all going to go bad within a day except for these so i really do want to eat these make these into juices now and then we can take all these out These vegetables last <laughs> forever. Uh, this meat is going to go bad, so we'll have to cook that. And we have a bunch more crockpots over here that are going to go bad. Nine days. Yeah. Yeah, let me organize this a little bit, and we'll see how much uh, how much we need to make. It's a lot of black currants. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we can try this out. So you put your bucket underneath. And I want to try eating some berries first. So I think you need to put in... Here, let's test it how many berries we put in here. Okay, you put half a stack. So you put 32 berries. So 30... Yeah, let's do the math on that. 32 times 8. 80 would be how much saturation you get. And then once you have your berries in there, you squish them down. And it takes a few minutes, but it makes 10 liters of juice. And then once we have that 10 liters of juice, we can see how much each liter gives us. And compare that to if we just ate these raw. We have a whole vessel full of them, so I think we need to, need to be juicing them. All right, let's see here. So we put that bucket of juice there. It lasts 21 days, and so one liter gives us 200. 
Oh, so it's actually less. So if you were to multiply 32 times 80, you'd get 2,560 saturation if you ate your berries normally, 32 berries. Um, but if you turn it into juice, then it'd be less, less calories, but it lasts way longer. All right, so I made a bunch of these bottle racks here. So if we put one of these full jugs here, yeah, two years. So you basically sacrifice a quarter or a fifth. You sacrifice a fifth of the saturation by turning it into a liquid. And you have to make a ton of barrels or a ton of these little bottles, but that's fine. That doesn't, uh, that's just clay. And then we can release this and I don't have any pigs nearby, so I'm going to let this all turn to rot because we can make Terra Petra out of rot. So it'll take a long time, but um, that's a good use for our berry mash. So I am going to work on filling all these racks up, and I think we'll do a layer up here. And a layer down here, and then do another... another uh, Rack of that. I think that'll be plenty of juice. I wonder if we could still walk through here. Oh, okay. So yeah, we might do, we might be able to fit a few layers of, of bottle racks in here. There we go. That's a bit better. We still have another, let's see how many rows we have. Eight, 16. Yeah, about 16 more, 15 more bottle racks to make, but then this will be completely full. I can't imagine we'll ever... <laughs> end up filling this completely, but um, this is definitely a good way to get a bunch of food that would otherwise expire. So you can fill it up, drink it, and just keep making some more. There's quite a few things I need to make here, so I'm going to make made two tree taps, uh, another copper hammer, because I don't want to waste all of our bronze hammer. Uh, a copper saw blade because I just broke mine and another wrench just in case just so I don't have to use all my durability on my tools in case I misplace something and we should make another bucket we can go make a tree tap kit right away I think it's just like this let's see yep we'll put that in our tree tap here in the same spot. There we go. Tree tapping kit. We'll go run over to our tree and try to make that happen. Also, I have to cut this glass up here to get enough pieces for our lantern. It's our first lantern. And we need this plate here. Awesome. Infinite light source. You can uh, walk around now at night and not be worried. All right, let's see how this works here. I have never used one of these before, so I don't know how how it works. Oh, that's cool. Seeing that, we'll stick on it. Um, let's harvest it first, and then let's put the tap on there. Okay. To gather more quickly, let's place check back often to collect the resin. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how often it makes it, so I will check back. Maybe in two days and see see how quickly it can it can uh, harvest from that because we definitely need a surplus of resin for the winter. I think I'm gonna throw a couple of these barrels in here because these can hold a hundred liters, the two of them. So that means I can do ten of uh, these. I can squish ten ten things worth of berries and. Put them in here for now until I can get enough uh, bottles. So there we have it. We have about 56 liters of red currant juice and almost 10, oh, almost 16 liters over here already preserved. Now we're going to have to make 56 <laughs> bottles. So that's going to take a take most of the night, but once we do that and fire them all, then we can store all this food. And that'll last a, probably a few days into the winter. Or that'll get us through a, a, several more days in the winter. And then we have all of this, which will go bad after 
three days. So hopefully if we can do all of that in three days and make another batch of 50 bottles, then we can get another, probably close to another 50, 60 liters worth of food. So yeah, I think this is a pretty good for a single episode. There's not going to be any light down here. This is just our juice cellar. And for now, uh, we're keeping our extra food in here. Uh, once we have some more time to dig out another cellar, maybe even on this side, I'll put the food on that side, make the pies. Um, but I'm going to make this mostly juice, and then eventually, once we can unlock and get to wine making, we can turn, we can start making some wine bottles in here too. So, thanks for watching. This is a productive one, although it mostly underground. We uh, made some good progress. Got our copper or our bronze tools going, and did a little bit of food preservation for the winter. So I will see you in the next one. So long.